When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. In our body, as some of you biology students would know, we need to keep a constant pH pretty much at all times. We want to make sure our pH stays very similar. So, for example, in our small intestine, we have a pH of around about 7 to 8, and it's going to stay in that area at all times. It might go up. If it goes up, it goes back down again, and it's going to be a pretty fine line in terms of balance. The reason why is because our enzymes, for example, need to have a certain pH, optimum pH, to function. And if it's not optimum, they become denatured and our body basically fails. So it's going to be a very fine line in terms of balance, but the question would be, how does this, how is this achieved? Why does this happen? Why doesn't it go up too far or down too far? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about buffers, because our body uses buffers to make sure we can maintain a relatively stable pH. Now, if you look at this equation, this is we have a weak acid here, and this weak acid has a conjugate base. Now, usually there might be unequal concentrations. There might be, let's say, there might be four, five molecules of this weak acid, and there might only be one molecule of this conjugate base. That's sometimes that's what happens. It's just natural. The equilibrium might be five to one. But in the case of a buffer, what we want is we want to have initially we want to have equal concentrations. So we might want to have, let's say, two here, and if we have two here, we have of the conjugate base. We also have two, and you're gonna go over, we're gonna go over why that's in a second. But let's say we have this weak acid, and we add some hydroxide solution, right? so some OHs, OH minus. That's a hydroxide. So this will usually make it go basic. So in, if in this case our pH, it would be going up if we can't remove these hydroxide somehow. But what happens is we have this weak acid. So what it can do, it can donate its hydrogen. Right? So this hydrogen will be donated, and it will go onto this here, onto the hydroxide, and thereby this obviously now, about that minus, is called H2O, and that is water. So we have less of this, we've used a bit of the weak acid, and we have, we'll have an increase of the conjugate base. We won't have an increase of the hydronium ion, because in this case, in the case here, we have our weak acid, which usually donates the hydrogen to the water molecule, and thereby it becomes a hydronium ion. But in this case, the weak acid actually donated the hydrogen to the hydroxide, and thereby it became a water molecule. So that means we have we have reduced our hydroxide, right? Our hydroxide has gone down without any increase of any acidic molecules. The hydroxide were not increased. We only have that conjugate base increasing. And overall, we had an increase, but then we counteracted it, we brought it back down. Same thing happens if, let's say, we add too much, because the molecules would be equal, so amounts of weak acid equal to the amount of conjugate base. Let's say we add a bit more of our hydronium ions. By putting some hydrochloric acid in there, we can increase our hydronium ions, or our hydrogen ions. And what happens now is our conjugate base, our A minus, will grab an extra hydrogen off of this to become our return to our weak acid, right? So this will increase. This will increase. And our hydronium ion is no longer hydronium ion because it's donated a hydrogen and it has returned to just water itself. So water will also increase. But in this case, again, they have we had an increase, initial increase of hydronium ion, which means initially would have decreased our pH. But then our buffer system kicks into place, grabs the extra hydrogen, that conjugate base grabs the extra hydrogen to make it water again, and removes the increase in hydronium ions, which brings it back to normal. So that's more or less how we can stabilize it, how we can have a constant pH, and obviously we need that to make sure our body works. The dot point itself is very similar to this. What I just described was a general idea. You know, weak so the A stands for acid, so HA would be the acid with its proton, and the A minus would be conjugate base. But now I'm going to go over an actual example, because the dot point itself says qualitatively describe the effect of buffers with reference to specific examples in a natural ecosystem. A natural system. So the natural system we're going to talk about is inside our body. So inside our body is the system we're going to talk about. It says qualitative, qualitatively describe. 
And what that means is we have to be able to describe it with words. So with words, and we should also use some equations as well. Words plus equations, not with numbers. So qualitative describe the effect of buffers with reference to a specific example in a naturalist system. So we need to tell them what we just described, what happens when we increase our hydroxide or our hydronium ion. We need to do that with a specific example that happens in our body. Right, so let's have a look, have a look, at, look at the first one. So let's say we have carbonic acid plus water goes into hydrogen carbon ions plus hydronium ions. In this case, carbonic acid because it will donate a hydrogen to a water. It is acting as the acid, so it's the acid. And if this is the acid, then obviously this hydronium ion will be its conjugate base. So this is the conjugate base. And we said that the concentrations in a buffer will be equal, right? So we have, let's say we have two of the carbonic acid. So brown here are your carbonic acid. And I just drew, you can imagine this brown to be HCO3, and then I just added the extra H. So the extra H just means it's at the moment it's in the acid form. It has an extra hydrogen which will soon donate. And the hydro hydrogen carbon ions is just this one here. Right? It's HCO3, and that's the same as this one here. And what's going to happen is I'm going to put some hydrochloric acid into it. So this is our hydrochloric acid, our HCl. Remember, as soon as HCl goes into water, what's going to happen is it's going to dissociate. The Cl minus part will just float around, so that's the green part, and the hydrogen part will also float around as well. Right, so let me put that hydrochloric acid, which means now we've, we're increasing. We're increasing our hydrogen concentration, which means we're incre decreasing our pH by doing this. So we put an acid into that buffer solution. And what happens? Again, I said it will dissociate, so our hydronium ion uh, our hydrogen ion and our chlorine ion have dissociated. Now what happens is it will actually attach to the, one of the hydrogen carbon ions because the hydrogen carbon ion acts as a base, right? So it's a conjugate base. So it likes to grab protons that float around. This one's floating around freely, freely. So it will grab it. And when it once it grabs it, it's the same as a carbonic acid. So it turns into carbonic acid and grabs that free hydrogen. So now this is carbonic acid. But as you can see, even though we have now we have more carbonic acid, there was no increase, so no net increase of our hydrogen ions or hydronium ions. And that's really good because that what that means is we have no change in pH. So in this case, our buffer has made sure to suck up that extra hydrogen ion which means pH overall stays the same. It's still neutral, there's no change in pH. Now, if we do the flip, if we put in the opposite, now in this case we have carbonic acid, same equation, but we have a, let's say this is sodium hydroxide, so this would here be sodium hydroxide. Obviously the OH part is a hydroxide, and the ball part was a sodium. Again, once we put that into equation, it will become Na plus and OH minus, which just happens naturally. Right. So let me do that. Let me put this into the buffer solution. And you're going to see they dis dissociate, as I mentioned earlier. So now you have a bit of OH floating around, and you have that sodium by itself. Sodium is really not important. That's not what we're focusing on. But what happens if we have more OH than beforehand? What do the OH minus do? Well, they make it more basic. So if we have no way to reverse this, then the solution itself would become basic. But in this case, we're going to have the opposite happening from what happened over here. We're going to have one of our carbonic acids, which can act as an acid, so it can donate its proton. What it will do is it will donate that proton, give it to the OH, and thereby it will be making OH, H2O, so that's water. Obviously, now I'll turn that into green, because it's not any more carbonic acids. It's hydrogen carbonate. So now we have a water molecule, which, again, is neutral. There's no acidic or basic nature to this water molecule. And we have three hydrogen carbon ions and one carbonic acid. And even though the ratio has changed, the most important part is that we could deal with an increase in hydroxide by neutralizing it, which means even though those ratios of carbonic to hydrogen carbonate have changed, there was no net change 
in the hydroxide ions because they were neutralized by the carbonic acid donating the proton to the hydroxide, which means overall there was no change in pH. Right? So in this case, either if it goes the, the um, if there's acid in included, it will go to the left. But by doing so, it will make sure that there's no change in pH. If there's a base added, it will go to the right. But again, the reason why it does that is to make sure there's no change in pH. In, in both cases, it has neutralized the addition of either hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions, and that allows it to keep it stable. So again, that same molecule can either act to mop up excess hydroxide or mop up excess hydrogen, thereby keeping our pH the same. So it says qualitatively describe the effects of buffers with reference to a specific natural system. You, so what you should remember, you should remember these equations, this one, just, you just need to remember one. And then what you need to remember is you need to remember what happens if we add more hydroxide, so if we were to become more basic, or if we add more hydrogen ions, which would make it more acidic, what will happen to the system? Right? And then keep in mind this, in both cases, if we either add more hydroxide or if we add more hydrogen, they will both become neutralized, which means there's no change in the net pH. The pH will remain constant. The molecules will shift around a bit, but the pH will stay constant. And that's the idea behind this whole concept of just maintaining constant pH, because we need to have that pH for our enzymes to work properly. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.